Well, it's great to be with you this morning. Uh, looking forward to continuing this journey through the Psalms, and I really have enjoyed this journey. And I hope you're continuing to enjoy it. And if you have missed any of the uh, soaps that I've done, any of the videos, you can check those out on my YouTube channel, Anthony P. Richards. Uh, please subscribe. Have lots of content on there and also the opportunity for you to share uh, as much as you can. Uh, and I really encourage you to do that. Um, I, I appreciate that you're watching these and I hope that they can be a blessing to you and to many other people as well. Uh, today we are going to be continuing uh, through Psalms and, and we're going to be looking at Psalm 112 today. Uh, the blessings upon those people who fear the Lord, who have reverence for the Lord. That's what this whole psalm is all about. Uh, it's, uh, what's, it's, it's, it's a really interesting psalm uh, because it's Psalm 111 and 112 really uh, should be read together. So you know, if you have a chance to read Psalm 111 either before or after this, um, because they, they kind of look at both sides of the spectrum of one uh, Psalm 111, uh, looking at uh, the blessings that come from God uh, and what we will do to God. And then uh, Psalm uh, 112, then looking at uh, what is shone in us, the brightness of God in us. What should we look like after we have gone to God? So, of course, Psalm 112 starts with the, the words, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, which and, and the word here is hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it's a personal praise. It's something from the psalmist that's an exhortation. Uh, it's an encouragement to other people. It's, a, it's more than an encouragement. Encouragement is, hey, I think it'd be really good for you. An exhortation is, no, you need to do this. This is an exhortation to praise God. Uh, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Uh, Psalm 111 ends with the idea that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And now the psalmist explains that the blessedness of the one who does fear the Lord uh, is, is, is uh, it's directly related to how you hallelujah. How's that? Uh, uh, James Boyce, the fear the Bible is talking about here is best described as a profound reverence. That is, we are to revere God or to stand in awe of him, who delights greatly in his commandments. Uh, the blessed one does not fear God in the sense of misery or reluctant obligation. The psalm, this psalm speaks of somebody who delights greatly in God's commandments. And what's really amazing about this and many of the psalms is that they point us to Jesus. How? Think of the great mess, uh, blessedness upon Jesus. No one revered God as much as Jesus did as a father. No one delighted in the Father's commandments as much as Jesus did. Uh, Jesus was the one who points us to the, to the validity and the uh, expression of verse 1 in Psalm 112. Verse 2. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. The one who fears the Lord and delights greatly in his commandments has God's blessing on their family. Um, uh, here's a great quote by Charles Spurgeon about, uh, about this, about um, descendants, about our descendants and about inheritance. If anyone should desire to leave behind him a flourishing posterity, let him not think to accomplish it by accumulating heaps of gold and silver and leaving them behind him, but by rightly recognizing God and serving him and commending his children to the guardianship and protection of God. Amazing. Verse 3. Wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. The psalmist pronounces here a blessing on the economic life of somebody who fears the Lord. Uh, their life of obedience and honor to God means blessing will come in their financial dealings. They're, they're, the, these kind of uh, verses, they, they kind of make us nervous. You know, we're like, oh, but I don't want to be one of those prosperity people. This is not about prosperity this is about Bible and understanding uh, what, what God's desire is 
for us, but there are some warnings that come with this, and we're about to, to see what some of them are. Um, again, a, a quote from Spurgeon on this. Understood literally, this is rather a promise of the old covenant more than the new, for many of the best of the people of God are very poor. Yet it has been found true that uprightness is the road to success, and all other things being equal, the honest person is the rising person. Um, so uh, let's continue on because these are kind of uh, unpacked. Um, the, the, the righteousness endures forever, okay? The, the blessed man's good works and uh, uh, right standing with God, they're, they're lasting. They don't fade away in, in this world or the world to come. And uh, the, the word righteousness here in both the Hebrew and the Greek um, is used to signify not just justice and being made right, but also beneficence, uh, be, benef uh, being, doing something that's beneficial to somebody else, uh, alms giving, giving something to the poor that is in the power, your power to do so. And this is probably the meaning here. Uh, righteousness endures forever. So wealth and riches are in your house. Okay, so let me, let, let me paraphrase verse three so you understand what it really means. Any wealth you have, is for you to give out to those who you meet who are in need uh, and do it for those who can't earn it for themselves. How's that? So you, there's nothing in the Bible that ever says that we get to sit on a fat pile of blessing in our life. Nothing. It's always any blessing in our life that is literally to do with wealth and finances is always about us being a conduit. It's always about flowing in and flowing out. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness, he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. The psalmist recognizes the darkness that fills his world, but the upright one who fears the Lord will be blessed with the light uh, or with light in the middle of their darkness. Uh, he's full of compassion here. Um, the light received from God shines through this righteous person. Uh, he displays to others grace, compassion, righteousness, the generosity that God has granted him. Verse three refers to the wealth and riches that come to those who often, you know, who fear the Lord. And uh, James Kidner is of this, this psalm deals realistically with the temptations that unfortunately go with the possession of money. These include an abuse of power, refusing to lend, fear, rivalry, and a lack of generosity. And that's the problem. That's the problem is that people love, so often God will bless people with, with financial wealth. They come to love that financial wealth and now they don't want to let it go. So they don't become a conduit and it doesn't go where God intended it to go. That's what the Bible's talking about. A good man deals graciously and lends. This is what a good man does. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Uh, what has been provided to him by God enables him to lend. Grace makes him willing to lend. He's not a borrower, but he's also not a hoarder. He doesn't sit on what he has. He wisely uses the talents that has been committed to them. Uh, discretion. Discretion is a, is a word that I wish more Christians knew about because I, I feel like a lot of people don't use discreet. In other words, not discreet. The one who fears the Lord is blessed with the wisdom that flows from their godly character to know, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. So they're very, they're, they're, they are discreet. Discretion is a part of their conduit experience. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. Because of, of, of his character and wisdom, the one who fears God will be firmly established. And as he trusts in the Lord, his heart is established. And in the end, he will see victory over his enemies, uh, which is what he goes on, you know, continues on here to say, he will not be afraid of evil tidings. He's steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Uh, um, evil, evil tidings, evil things, they're all, they're all around us and they come to us every, every day. Uh, they can come from our family, they can come from our health business, uh, from uh, people around us, the culture, from politics. Uh, but, but one who fears the Lord will not be afraid. He will not be afraid. Yes, there's evil, but not, not afraid. That's why there is no place for us in the world right now to have fear, even though there are, there, there's a lot of, of evil around us. Uh, but, but the Bible says, no, they will not be afraid. No, just not going to be. It's a declaration, do you see? 
Uh, his heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Um, uh, this, this, this blessed man, this blessed person, is somebody whose heart is propped up by the heart of God. And they're, they're not fickle and they're not a coward. They, they, don't, they don't cower and like in fear, like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder if God, God couldn't help me out of this or not. I just don't know whether he can. I really hope the Bible's true. No, 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 that's, that's not what the blessed person does. The blessed person says, absolutely, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. Verse 9, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. This is what, this is what the blessed one who has wealth this is, these are all the things that you're meant to do with it. Now, you have to understand, this is not just for rich people. If you think, oh, this is a psalm for rich people, I'm not rich, therefore this has nothing to do with me. No, missed it all. You've missed the whole point. Um, too much is given, much is required, but whatever we are given, there is something required. So it, it's, it's, it, it's in proportion. Uh, the, the psalm has much to say about the generosity of one who fears the Lord, not the generosity of one who has a lot to give. So if you fear the Lord and you have an awe, an awe and reverence for God, then you and I are called to do this, okay? We are called, we are blessed and, and regards to material things, either in a little way or a lot. And it's important, it's important that, that, that whatever we do, we are generous with the things blessed, that God has blessed us with. If God's only blessed you with a little so far, then be, be generous with a little. Be like the widow's might. Um, but the, this, the, whatever you have, you need to be wise and disperse means uh, that disperse means uh, there's a thoughtful and wise distribution um, that is guarding the affairs, if you like, of the person person distributing. Uh, Paul quotes verse nine in Second Corinthians chapter nine uh, to encourage Christians to be generous. He says, "As it is written, he has dispersed abroad; he has given to the poor; his righteousness endures forever." Uh, and uh, Thomas Horne said, this generosity is not given indiscriminately and at random. It is dispersed like precious seed with prudence and discretion according to the nature of the soil and in proper season so as to produce the most plentiful harvest. There's, there, I, I love this. I love this. His righteousness endures forever. Um, the profile of this man or woman who fears the Lord is incredibly remarkable. It's a reflection of the character of God himself. Um, and it's perfectly fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Okay, So if you are a man and a woman who fears the Lord, this is your profile. This is your profile. Uh, you are God-fearing. You fear the Lord. You are a lover of God's word. You delight greatly in his commandments. You are prosperous in wealth and riches. You are somebody who makes a home for your family, their descendants, their house. You are somebody who is loving and kind, gracious, full of compassion. You are somebody who is a helper and you deal graciously and lend. Uh, you are somebody who is wise. You guide your affairs with discretion. You are somebody who is strong, not afraid of evil tidings. You are somebody who is generous, dispersed abroad. You are somebody who does not abuse power. His horn will be exalted with honor. And you are somebody who is a hated man. Yeah, that last one's tough. See, this is, this is where it gets hard. See, verse 10 says, the wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. When people see God's blessing on your life, oh, there's just something that rises up within them. And then when they see you using that, that what you have for good, it makes them even more angry because they want you to be greedy and, 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 and guarded like they are. And in contrast, the, the, uh, the, the upright man or woman, um, they, they stand forever and the wicked just melts away. And their misery becomes all the worse um, as their desire is frustrated and they see all the blessings that come to those who fear the Lord. And so what's the observation for us today? The observation, I think, is, is, is pretty simple. Is uh, blessed is the person who fears the Lord. 
if you want to know how all this plays out, it, only, it starts with hallelujah. It starts with a praise the Lord. It starts with uh, somebody who delights greatly in his commandments. Here's the problem. We want to be blessed, but we don't want to say hallelujah. We don't want to say, God, I fear and revere you. We don't want to delight greatly in his commandments. But, oh, but we want to have the opportunity to be generous. You see, it starts with a hallelujah. It starts with a praise the Lord. It starts with God, I fear and I, I have awe and reverence for you. It starts with me delighting in the commandments of the word of God. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. And, and if, if you don't know where your journey starts, you will never get to the finish line. And this is where our journey starts. That's my observation. Heavenly Father, help us. I pray, help us to have a journey that starts with a hallelujah and ends, Lord, with us dispersing and helping. And uh, uh, God, wh wh whomever you, you, you bring into our lives, God, I pray just like the Apostle Paul, you said uh, uh, through him that uh, whatever abundance we have, that it would meet the lack of those we come into connection with. So God, I pray, Lord, help us to have that perspective that starts with a hallelujah in your name, I pray. Amen.